Good morning, folks. As I showed in yesterday afternoon's video, if I count every quake they've downgraded, there have been five significant quakes in the first 29 and a half days of 2013. Yesterday I had put the quakes from this recent uptick on the calendar at the bottom to give a visual comparison. The Japan quake had just occurred, so that made seven quakes during the short watch period versus five in the days before it. The USGS has split one of the Santa Cruz quakes into two events and we had to add it and yet another quake there afterwards, making nine significant quakes in four days. Even if we don't get any more this watch, I believe this counts as a solid uptick. Some of those recent quakes were the 6.9 I mentioned in Japan, it prompted the second video yesterday, and Santa Cruz again, they've taken six of those nine significant quakes and appear to have either permanently shifted a buoy or dropped the land underwater by about one meter. Also of note, Rokotenda with a 45,000 foot ash cloud that extends nearly 200 miles away. Now, Opposite the northern hemisphere, low spin clockwise here and red high pressure moves counterclockwise, reinforcing northern movement in the middle that has Tasmania likely a nudge colder than it was the last few days. That moisture that gets caught in the spinning low will end up in New Zealand. Two large lows, really driving water vapor on their southern edges, one over southern Europe and the other over Italy, Greece and up to Moscow, so the precipitation forecast should be no surprise. The counterclockwise motion of northern lows can be seen here, yanking down the Arctic air and creating this trough of cold temperature. The counterclockwise Pacific low is pulling warm, moist air from the ocean up onto cold, dry air over Canada and Alaska. Just as cold air dips way south over the Midwest into the warmer region, the converging air masses are what produces the precipitation. We've gone ahead and also pulled up the long-term U.S. forecast off the Weather Channel as well. Yesterday. You remember the solar wind speed and temperature were spiking. Throughout the day, that stream caused minor disturbances in the magnetic shield with some minor plasma penetration and inductions taken in bursts from the baseline. This morning, the muon network shows a wild drop in cosmic ray density, likely from an approaching CME cloud that acts as a shield of its own from the galactic cosmic rays. We had expected a CME to hit today along with the coronal hole stream and with the speed still high, the orange solar wind density is now rising as well. Energetic flux beginning, but this is early stage of impact. We have also a nicely developed active region on the northeastern quadrant, bipolar and somewhat complex, and this morning she unleashed a C8 solar flare. Still not quite what the Earth is going to need to expand our atmosphere, but compared to the solar shutdown we've seen, we'll take anything we can get. Watch the dark bottom spot of the group as they set it in motion. Its entrance up into the central part of the group may be what destabilized it. We also had a little bipolar active region pop up right next to a decaying relic near the center disk. Depending on the spreading speed of this new active region, an interaction with the previously foreign Umbra due east is possible. I'm hoping the quake watch fades off with no damage and death, but the coronal holes that caused the watch are still here and the planets are beginning to line up. I'll end with some more shots of where weathering the weather will be a bit worse than others today. Quake watch continues, space weather on the way and the flare potential is back. Eyes open, no fear at 6.30am eastern time and that's the news. Be safe everyone.